Hello there, I'm playing with Chunk again, and this time I'm playing with Ammo Drives and Ammo Discs. Uh, Mo stands for Magnetic Optical, Mo Disc. Uh, Sony was one of the biggest manufacturers at this time of drives and of discs, and of course Verbatim, we still know them from recordable CDs and DVDs. Um, this disc started in, well, somewhere in the 80s, I guess. They started with 128 megabyte. This one is a 600 megabyte version. Then they uh, increased density and got 2.6 gigabytes and then the last uh, version was this 9.1 gigabyte per disk we have an A side and we also have a B side that means if you wanted to uh, record the full 9.1 gigabyte you had to flip over the disk for the other half of the capacity. Uh, we have some write protect switches that can be moved with a fingernail. But you can move it with a screwdriver. One for the a side and the other one for the B side. So you can write protect either side independently. Now the most interesting thing on this uh, MO drive, uh, MO discs, is how they uh, increase the capacity. For example, you see here 512 byte per sector. This one has 1024 bytes per sec uh, sector and this goes up to 4096. <coughs> and the sectoring itself has also changed. If I open this here, you can see the optical disk. And you can see the sectors here, they are marked uh, in the factory, I go this way. So this is one sector here. And as you can see, we have um, 412 bytes per sector. That means we have 412 bytes here near the center on a short track. And we have the same 400, uh, 512 bytes on the outer uh, tracks here, which is a much, much larger uh, area. So you uh, actually, you lose capacity because here on the large part of this sector, you could easily fit almost two times the data of the small part here. So what they did is something simple. They changed to a dynamic or soft sectoring. I hope I can get this on the camera. It's not that easy. Okay, now it, you can see it. So we have a lot of marks. Well, let me adjust the light a little bit. Okay, I think now we can see that. That's the sector marks and they all have the same space regardless if they are inside here or on the outer uh, circumference. Um, that means because the space is almost the same, you get more sectors on the outer diameter than on the inner one. 
So I hope you can see that. Uh, it's about the same on the 9 gigabyte version, except that the spacing here between the sector marks is a little bit larger. Uh, I think that has to do because we are writing here 4096 bytes per sector, so we need a little bit of larger sector. And we also don't have so many steps from the inside to the outside, so I think they did another trickery here. I love it to play with this shiny things. I think I have to put one of them on my wall, maybe with a with a clockwork in the middle to show the time. Why not? They are not used anymore. Maybe some relics with old data. And that's the drive for it. It has the same dimensions as a CD-ROM or DVD drive, except that the slot is a little bit bigger. This one has no front panel because it was inside a, a big MO disk library. So there was a robotic arm feeding the individual disk to this drive and there were also more than one drive. And uh, let's have a look inside to see how that works. So I have already removed two screws so the cover comes off quite easily. Uh, there are of course a lot of Sony chips because that's the manufacturer of this unit. We have here a SCSI bus, an 8-bit SCSI bus, power connector like on the old floppies or hard drives and then a, a connector here where you can set for example with some jumpers the SCSI ID and some other features. It's made for a, for a robot so for example the, the eject uh, command does also come via this uh, connector here because there is no unload button. Well, that's not entirely true. Here it is, the unload button, but you cannot press it with your finger. So the robot or the robot controller uh, ejects the disk via that connector. Okay, there's the bottom plate. I have also removed two screws because you all know how to remove screws. I don't have to show you that. Okay. That's it. What we have here is the laser pickup on these two magnetic rails here and also the two uh, rods, polished rods. We have the drive motor with a ball bearing and so far it looks pretty much like a normal DVD drive except that the mechanics here is a little bit more robust so let's open that up and then we probably see the big difference because it's not an optical drive and it's not a magnetic drive. Um, one interesting detail this mechanical block here is made by Olympus. You know that's the famous Japanese um, camera uh, manufacturer. They obviously uh, are great in casting metal and precision mechanics, although Sony 
is also not bad in that business, but for some reasons they let Olympus make this. Okay. Okay, that's the optical part with the spinning motor that drives the disc. We have here the laser lens that moves across the entire radius of the disc. Uh, the laser itself, or oh, the laser lens, is also mounted flexible to follow the track and to focus to the to the surface it's almost the same as in a optical drive today the difference is here on the other side uh, that's this large coil here it's an electromagnet and as you can see it is as large as the entire radius of the disc so the whole disc here is under the influence of this strong magnet well what happens is relatively simple to explain the disc contains a material that is magnetizable but only when it is heated up above a, a certain temperature. So that means you can use this large magnet and then you use the laser to heat up the disc, the, the surface of the disc or the active layer here on the disc uh, on certain spots and these spots get magnetized. Now you may wonder how do you read this disc now this magnetized layer has some special properties when it is magnetized it changes its optical properties and uh, it reflects the light in a different way this is called a magneto optical care effect k-e-r-r -R effect uh, you may google that, you find an interesting uh, article of, uh, of that in Wikipedia. Uh, and well, it does well reflect the light differently and that's then picked up by the laser pickup which reads uh, the disc with a much lower power setting. And uh, that's almost the same principle as on a modern uh, optical drive. Uh, the only difference is you can also erase that drive, but most of the time you could only erase the entire uh, disk or one side of the disk and then rewrite it. Um, on some older drives, this part here in the middle between uh, in the center of this uh, coil was actually a permanent magnet which was uh, attached to ball bearings on either side and it was made to rotate like this one time the north pole showed up and the other time the south pole I have two theories about that uh, theor theory one, number one is uh, you only write once uh, with the magnet in one direction and then you make a second pass flip the magnet over to south and write all the zeros or the second theory is with the magnet in one direction you are actually writing all the data and with the magnet in the other direction uh, that was used to erase the data again so I don't know exactly how that worked because uh, it's a little bit difficult to uh, get information about this because the technology is already quite a bit old 
but uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, by the way, the laser is here underneath that block here, and if you look closely, you can probably see the window where the laser comes out. There's a about here underneath there is a, a hole where the laser shoots out in this direction and there is a mirror underneath here and uh, the focus lens and this writes in the path of this laser reflecting it to the uh, surface of the disk okay I think that's it. Thanks for watching.